somewhere and you're not coming. I've slept all night, and most of the day. Why am I still feeling tired? Someone's at the door. I really hope it's not him again. Hello, Ms. Ashworth. How are you? Are you feeling better? Do I know you? Ah, of course. You don't remember me. My name is Mitzi Hunt. We met a few days ago. You were out cold at the time. Those pills you had were real good. You probably had one too many, mind you. So it's you. I had a feeling you'd turn up sooner or later. It is me, indeed. A girl who got in the way and fucked everything up. I'll understand if you're angry at me. It wouldn't surprise me if you blame me for calling the ambulance and saving your life, but... I had other reasons for it, too. Personal reasons. It's important. It's important. That's why I came here the other night. To talk to you. Why would you want to talk to me? It makes no sense. I saw the ad you'd put in the paper. It seems you have a room to rent. I... They still print that? It was months ago. Nobody ever called. I forgot all about it. I gave up on it, actually. Well, I'd like to be your lodger, Miss Ashworth. But... You've got the room and I've got the money. Won't that work for both of us? I'm very tidy. I don't make much noise, and I promise not to spend too long in the bathroom in the morning. I don't really... I read your suicide note, you know. I'm sorry, but I did. I understand that you like your loneliness. You stray from people. I get it. But I won't get in the way. I promise I will give you your space. You won't even know that I'm here half the time. What do you think? Do we have a deal? Well, I guess I could do with some extra money, but... Great! Can I come in? How did you get in that night? I'm sure I locked the door. Well... Okay, I'll tell you. You won't like it, probably, but I'll tell you. I picked the lock. You did what? Look, I know it sounds like I'm some sort of criminal, but believe me, I'm not. My dad was a master locksmith. He knew everything there was to know about locks. He taught me some of that stuff, too. Look, 
got this little box. I always carry it with me. There are a few types of lockpicks in it. They're very expensive. Custom made. It's now the only thing that reminds me of him. I see. But you know, it does sound like your father was really a burglar, not a locksmith. It's not important anymore. I guess it isn't. But what gave you an idea that you can pick the lock on my front door and just barge in uninvited? I heard the cats. They were going crazy. It was like if all hell broke loose inside. The noise they made. It was incredible. Like ghosts howling. Then for a while, it turned into an almost human cry. Well, anyway, I kept banging on the door, but you were already asleep. In a coma or whatever. So I pulled out a sea rake and got the door open. I... You could say I had a hunch. A hunch? Great. I had a hunch that something was very wrong. And I made no mistake, did I? You said you were my daughter at the hospital. You're a little liar, aren't you? How can I trust you? How should I know you won't slit my throat when I sleep? Jesus, what's wrong with you? Slit your throat? Are you always so suspicious of people? If I wanted to do such a thing, I would never have bothered saving you, would I? Just think about it for a second. I was trying to avoid all the stupid questions. I didn't know what else to say. That seemed like an easy option at the time. Otherwise, they wouldn't have let me come in the ambulance with you. And I wanted to see if you've made it. Well, I died in that hospital, if you must know. Oh. But not for long enough. It seems I must have been too attached to this shitty life I lead, and must suffer some more before I can rest. Jesus, Miss Ashworth. Why all this negativity? What in the world has made you think this way? Clearly the only thing you suffer is some nasty depression. Not that it's any of my business. But have you tried talking about it to a doctor? Yes, I have. Did it help? You must be out of your mind, Mitzi. It did. This spare room I have is pretty bad, you should know. I'm not fussy. It's not for long anyway. Just a few weeks, maybe. Anything is better than what I've got at the moment. Which is? I slept at the train station last night. There's a guy there who docks rats. You should see him. Wait, can you even afford rent for the room? Sure. I'll pay you for two months in advance. Money's not an issue. Why not go to a hotel, then? I hate hotels. More than train stations. With homeless weirdos. And rats. Robbie? Oh no, he's cool. He's alright. And he kept the rats away. Why do you want this room so much? Let's face it. This flat's falling apart. It's cold. It's dark. It's a bit moldy. This is the old part of town where nothing ever happens. It's far from the city center, and there are only two buses going through here, and that's if you're lucky. And I'm known around here as a fucked up, wicked cat lady. They'd burn me at the stake if they could. They'd put me in a bag and drown me in the river like a litter of kittens. I'm not exactly great company for a young girl like yourself. Who are they? People. Just people. I don't give a fuck about people, Miss Ashworth. But I do like cats. You think they'll smell the rats on me? Shower. I'm sure you'll change your mind when you see it. I'd love to see it. And I'm sure it isn't as bad as you picture it. The window is stuck, and it doesn't shut properly. It's alright. I like fresh air. There's clutter everywhere. I'll tidy up. It's got a funny smell. I'll burn some joysticks to cover it up. I love joysticks. Fine. I give up. Follow me. You can see it for yourself, if you're so stubborn.
This room is perfect. Really? What about all this clutter? I'll move some stuff to the side if that's okay with you. But most of it I can use. All I really need is a bed to sleep and a roof over my head to cover me from that rain. And a power outlet so I can charge my laptop. Oh, and somewhere to watch too. You got a shower, right? I'm dying for a shower. You're not in some kind of trouble, are you? Do I really look like some kind of a serial murderer to you, Miss Ashworth? I don't know. What do serial murderers look like anyway? A scar across the face, an eye patch, rough stubble. Those sort of things, I guess. That's a pirate you've just described. Just add a wooden peg leg and we've got a full picture. But who knows? I'm no expert on murderers. Not yet, anyway. Is there anyone I can contact? For references? Well, I've never really rented a room before, so... Not really. I've lived with my mum all my life. Until recently, that is. I could give her a call. Oh, that would be a perfect spot for my post up there. Um. Yeah, sh sure, that would be okay. Are you a part of that emo subculture? Please don't say that word ever again. No, no, this is just how I dress. I grew up listening to real rock and roll, not that snow crab. I hate to be a part of that generic bandwagon. Okay. Clearly a sensitive subject for you. You know, people seem to think that just because someone dresses in black, they're poor. You know. You can't generalize like that. It's more complicated. I dress in black too. Of course! That's because black is the best color. Period. You mentioned some personal reasons for staying here. Yes. It's a long story, though. I don't really want to bore you with all that personal crap. Okay. In that case, could you give me the short version? Yeah, alright. I'm looking for someone. I don't really know this person. But it's a... Friend of a friend. I only ever talk to this guy online, so... I don't know what he looks like. I love this lamp. Does it work? What was I talking about? Oh, yes. I don't know what he looks like, but I know my way around computers. I managed to track him down. Turns out he lives here, in this building somewhere. What I don't know is which flat he lives in. There are eight flats here altogether. He's in one of them, and I must just figure out which one. It shouldn't be too hard. What do you want from this person? I just want to talk to him said something really bad, something horrible. I need to talk to him to get closure, you know? Just talk. Are you sure? Yep. I want to meet face to face with him. That's all. You know, you've been asking me all these questions and I never had a chance to ask about how you're feeling. I mean, you've just gone through a terrible experience. You barely survived. I suppose I might be out of line to ask you this, but I'm really curious as to why you tried to kill yourself. What made you do that? What did you feel? Long story. Won't bore you with this personal crap. Ha ha ha. Right back at me, I guess. I did give you a short version, though. Yes, but somehow I can't help the feeling that you've omitted a few important facts. Just some details. Anyway, I suppose your story is the kind that can't be shortened. Still, if you feel like talking about it sometimes, I'd love to listen. I'll bear that in mind, Mitzi. Let's go back to the living room. Room's great! So what do you say, Miss Ashworth? I hope you're not going to change your mind about this. Miss Ashworth? What happened? Are you alright? Go 
away. You have to go away right now. But why? Miss Ashworth, what's wrong? You're not safe here. You should leave now. Please, Miss Ashworth, I'd really like to stay. Don't throw me out now. Well, you can't stay. You can't. If you don't go, something terrible's gonna happen to you. Please, just leave me alone. I was perfectly happy before you came. I have my cats. I have... I... Just stay away from me. What? Are you deaf? Did I not make myself clear? This is not a good place for you. Where am I gonna go? It's late and, and it's pouring down with rain. I don't give a damn where you go. You can go back to the bloody train station for all I care. Anywhere. Anywhere but here. I knew you were one of them. I knew it. What are you talking about? Look, just try to relax. Everything's okay. But why you? Why would you want to do this to me? You have no reason. Calm down. I'm not going to do anything to you, all right? I just want to rent a room. Nothing else. I promise. Damn, I even swear. I won't cause you any trouble, okay? Just take a deep breath. Please explain to me what's happened. I'm a little confused here. Then... Maybe... Oh, no. 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 You're going to die. I know. Yeah. I know. But how did you know, Miss Ashworth? Are you some sort of a psychic? Do you possess some kind of supernatural mind-treating abilities? Or is it just so fucking obvious? What do you mean? I... I don't know how you're going to die, but call it a hunch, if you like. That's cool. A hunch. Well, I do. I know exactly. It's already started, as a matter of fact. Do you want to see? I'll show you. Here, Miss Ashworth. Take a good look, because I'm not going to do it again. It's time to wake up, my little pussy cat. What's the matter, sleepyhead? Had a bad dream? Uh, do you want me to give you a cuddle and a kiss? Take the nightmares away? What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? <laughs> well, don't you worry, my sweetest. I know a thing or two about pussy cats. I can help. What do you say? Shall I take a good look at this pussy of yours? Touch me, and I'll kill you, you sick bastard. I fucking mean it. You have no idea who I am. <laughs> You're just a crazy cat lady. That's all you are. Soon, I'll be the crazy cat lady who blew your brains out all over these fucking walls, pal. So laugh while you can. It's not long now.
What's going on in there? Who's this? Did you play with this little bitch behind my back? Cause if you did, I swear to God. Me? I'd never do that. You know me, honey. You're the only girl for me. This lady here will join us for dinner. That's all. For what? Take the goddamn mask off when you talk to me. You know damn well I can't stand it. And make sure you put it back in the van so you don't fucking lose it again. Okay, okay. I was just saying, she, she's here for dinner. Good. Dinner. I'm starving. And I'm sick to death of them bloody cats! You nasty little whore! Trying to seduce my husband in my own home? How bloody rude! Who the fuck are you? Shut up, you stupid bitch! I know what you're up to. You kept staring at him with these big green eyes. You want him, don't you? You think you can take him from me? Well, I've got just the thing. I always keep this bottle handy. It's bleach. The strongest you can get. You give me no choice. I can't risk losing him. I have to make sure he won't be attracted to you anymore. You won't need these eyes and this face much longer anyway. No one will do it right if you don't do it yourself. Hey there, gorgeous. I see my old lady brought the bleach again. What a shame. I really liked your eyes. <laughs> it could have been a start of something very exciting for us, if you know what I mean. <laughs> she does that every single time. What do they call it? Trust issues, <laughs> that's it. Well, never mind. Plenty more fish in the sea. I I'm not too fussy, but even I have some standards. Ain't gonna touch a bird like you, I gotta be honest, girl. You look like shit. But I wouldn't want you to think I'm not a kind man. Uh, uh, Plenty of time until dinner, and you're in pain, so I've brought something to end your suffering. 
think of it as an option. I've got this gun here. <laughs> it's one of my favourites. There's just one bullet in the chamber. Large calibre. Yet you'd be long dead before you'd feel any pain. Sounds good, doesn't it? I mean, it's, ju it's just an idea, you know, no pressure. Ah, of course, you can't see it. That bleach turns your eyes to nothing but jelly. So I'll just leave it for you here. Feel free to use it. That, that bullet's meant for you anyway. I'd better go now. We won't want to get caught red-handed again, would we? You naughty minx. What was that? You can't reach it. Well, what did you expect? Life's a real fucker sometimes. What? Who's this? My eyes. I can't... I can't see a thing. That bitch. A key? Who are you? Say something. Anything. I... I should be able to unlock the handcuffs now. The gun! That idiot left his gun! No! No, no, no! I dropped it! Where is it? Where the hell is it? I've got it. I'm sorry, Mitzi. I have to break my promise. Hope you don't mind creepy posters. It's your room. You can do what you like with it. But I definitely prefer this to fairies, rainbows and pink unicorns. Did you make these? No. My boyfriend made them. Some of them anyway. So, Miss Ashworth. I happen to have a bottle of wine in my bag. I was going to leave it to Robert, but I forgot all about it. Robert? The guy with the rats? Oh, yes. Of course. So, shall we have a drink, then? We could get to know each other a bit more. I know, I promise I won't get in the way. And, I mean, 
You don't have to if you don't feel like it. But since we're going to live together for a little while, it won't hurt if we talk to each other, will it? Are you sure you can drink in your condition? It won't make me any worse, that's for sure. I'm not on any cancer medication. I feel good. The way I see it, I haven't got much time left, so I might as well make the most of it. That makes sense, I suppose. We can have a drink if you like. Great! I'll bring the wine. Oh, damn. It's one of those bottles with a cork. Have you got a bottle opener, Miss Ashworth? In the kitchen. I'll go get it, shall I? Yes, please. And while you're there, could you get a couple of glasses, too? That bottle open. Yeah, but we'll need glasses too. See if you can find some. I found some wine glasses. All oh, right, that's all we need. Oh, and Miss Ashworth, I really must say this before we start. Yeah. I promise I won't cut your throat when you're asleep. Very funny. No, I mean it. That's fine. But just so you know, I always sleep with my eyes open. Oh, it's not raining anymore. Oh well, I don't mind rain. Sometimes I even like it. But according to weather forecast, there's a nasty fog coming. Now that I'm actually scared of. I got lost in a fog once, when I was just nine or ten. I remember I sat under a tree crying, thinking some monster would appear right in front of me and drag me away. But now that you're a big girl, you know there are no monsters. Yeah? How do you know? The only monsters are us. Murderers, rapists, arsonists. They're the real beasts. So far from humanity, they're no longer capable of feeling compassion or guilt. They're the ones we should really be afraid of. But whether they're lurking in the woods or fog or the darkness of our cellars, it's all irrelevant. You can't predict what happens. You can't do anything to stop it. There is only one way. You turn into a beast yourself and like them, you show no mercy. Whoa! Where did that come from, Miss Ashworth? I just don't like murderers. They're nothing but... Parasites. How are you planning to find this guy? I don't know yet. A bit of detective work, perhaps. It shouldn't be that hard, really. There are only eight apartments here. One is yours. That leaves us with seven. I was hoping that you could give me a hand, actually. You know some of your neighbors, don't you? Not many. I never really cared about them. They changed over the years, too. You probably also figured by now that this is not the sort of place where new neighbors are greeted with a freshly baked cake. You see a new face, you give them a blank stare as you pass them in the hall, and you forget about them a minute later. That bad, eh? Well... There's that bull guy who lives above me in flat five. He came here recently to shout in my face. He's a nasty piece of work, but I really don't think he's the person you're looking for. 
What does he do for a living? I think he's a train driver. I can't imagine somehow that my guy would be a train driver. Okay, that's good. Leaves us with just six. Anyone else you know? I'd have to think. You know, maybe not tonight. Let's just talk about something else, okay? I have plenty of time. There's no need to rush this. Maybe tomorrow we could sit down together and make a plan. I could draw a simple map of the building and with your help mark down who lives where? Sounds good to me, Mitzi. So, the big C. Want to talk about it? Well, to be honest, I didn't really want to tell you about it like that. I put you in a very difficult position, I know. It's just that I was really desperate to get this room. I hope you can understand. This is the last and most important thing I must do. Before my time is up. It's fine. You seem alright. It's just... I find it hard to trust people these days. Maybe it's time I opened my eyes to see others have problems too. Some, like yourself, even bigger than mine. What kind of cancer is it? Do you mind me asking? Brain tumor. Her name is glioblastoma. Huh. <laughs> yep, they're all girls, the way I imagine it. Just look at their names. Lymphona, melanoma, myeloma, leukemia, sarcoma. Each of them a fucking goddess of death. Beautiful and ruthless. Hmm, you might just be right about that, Mitzi. I used to be a nurse. I know a few things about cancer. And I know glioblastoma. She's a real bitch. Yeah, and yet she gets to be the prom queen before night ends while I disappear down the back exit. How long? They said I had a year. But that was six months ago, so... Yeah. Not awfully long. Is there anything... They've tried. I'm sorry. Yeah. So am I. Do you want to talk about something else? You mentioned a boyfriend. Tell me something about him. Yeah, okay. Let's talk about him. His name is Jack. He's dead. Oh. Miss Ashworth, are you sure you want to listen about my miserable life? I don't want to bring you down. These aren't happy stories. And I'm not a happy stories kind of person. I'm sure you've noticed by now. I guess so. Anyway, I suppose I would have had to tell you about Jack sooner or later. After all, he is the main reason I'm here. I just... don't know where to start. Tell me how you two met. Oh, we knew each other for like... Forever. We grew up on the same street. It's funny how we seem to be made for each other. A perfect match. I always knew he was the guy for me, and I'm sure he never doubted that either. Jack was absolutely crazy about me. We thought one day we would marry, have children, be happy. I never had many friends because I had Jack. I didn't need anybody else. You know, if there's one thing I'm really grateful for in my life, it's that I got to experience this pure, perfect love. Some people go through a lifetime without knowing how it feels. I guess I've been very lucky. But all luck runs out sometimes. Jack made those pictures on your wall. Was he an artist? He always liked all kinds of morbid stuff, whether it was music, movies, paintings. So do I, really. We had that in common, amongst other things. People say it's depressing to listen to sad songs or watch sad films. But I never felt that way. And yet, you are scared of fog. Oh, that's different. I might be scared of fog, but I like spiders. They're beautiful. You must be out of your mind, Mitzi. No, honestly, there is a certain 
indescribable beauty and sadness. Just like there's beauty in the grey and ugly winter morning when you look past the obvious and notice what others can't see. You must love my apartment then. It's like ugly took a vacation here and never went home again. How did he take the news about your cancer? He thought I was joking at first. He laughed. Then he got really angry. I swore to him I was serious, but he still wouldn't believe me. We had a big fight that night. It was our first and only fight. But it was awful. He smashed some stuff. His guitar, of all things, was the worst. He loved that guitar. Why did he break it? He was absolutely furious. He walked out on me that night, and when he came back the next day, he was different. He begged me to try surgery and chemotherapy. I didn't really want those things, but I did the chemo for him. It didn't help. It just made me feel sick all the time. I felt trapped in this strange place where nothing that happened around me seemed real. Maybe that's why I didn't see what my cancer was doing to Jack, and it was destroying him as well. He changed. He became obsessed with death. It seemed death was all he ever thought about, even though it was me, not him, who was supposed to die. How did he die? How did Jack die? It was so distant the last few weeks before, before he died. What I didn't know was that he kept looking for something. I don't think he even knew what exactly, but it eventually found him. Or rather, he found him. There are those forums online, you know, about all sorts of stuff. Fishing, computer games, horses, gambling, addictions, everything really. Accidentally, Jack stumbled upon one about suicide. There's a guy there, calls himself the Eye of Adam. He's a fucking god on that forum. It's like a failed suicide club. People mostly try to help each other and offer support. Sometimes it just helps to know there are others like you. To listen to their stories and, and how they cope with their lives. But the Eye of Adam is an advocate of death. He dwells on human weakness. His job is to plant an idea. To give them a reason to die and tell them how to do it wants him for good. Jack took the bait. Before he knew, he was completely brainwashed. One day, he sat down with me and tried to explain his perfect solution. It was the Romeo and Juliet kind of scenario. We were both to die together in each other's arms. It was supposed to be a quick and foolproof death. There was no chance we would have been saved. All thanks to the eye of Adam created a tool for perfect suicide. He told me it was very simple. All we needed were two easily accessible household chemicals, which combined together create gas called hydrogen sulfide that kills you within a couple of minutes. I told him he was fucking nuts, of course, but he just wouldn't give up. He reasoned with me, and he begged, and eventually just kept screaming at me. I figured it was his crazy idea of a modern romance, but it was downright tacky and just wrong. Finally, he said he would get everything ready and wait for me in our special place at dawn. Five in the morning. Don't be late. Those were his last words he said to me. Then he stormed out. I cried for hours, thinking I, I didn't deserve all that from the person I love most in the whole world. A few times I even tried to persuade myself that Maybe he was right, and I should do it. I just couldn't. I eventually fell asleep. I didn't plan it. My head was killing me. I was so tired. I woke up suddenly. I could see the sun rising out my window. It was nearly five. In utter panic, I threw myself off the bed and ran out the door. I needed to stop him. I needed to get there before it was too late. 
but right there in my bedroom before I even left. I already knew it was. When I arrived at our special place, it was already bright. We used to go there in the past, drink wine, sometimes smoke weed and listen to Pink Floyd, sometimes make love in Jack's car. There wasn't really anything special about that old park lot. But to us there was. It was completely abandoned. It was quiet. It was safe. After that day I've never gone there again. There were signs on the car windows. Warning signs, yeah. I found on that forum that the Eye of Adam doesn't want any accidental deaths. So we posted this poster design for people to print. It turns out there's a whole sick ideology behind it. Fumes from the car could hurt anyone who opens the door, and that's not the point. The idea is to die willingly and with clear mind, to prepare for it, to embrace it. Jesus. You'd think the police would investigate the whole thing. Sounds almost like a sect. This guy knows how to hide. The police can't be bothered to make an effort. It took me three months to track him down. Now I'm finally so close, I can almost smell that fucker. I'm so sorry. I think now I understand. He loved you so much, he couldn't bear the thought of living without you. And that guy... The Eye of Adam. I'm not surprised you want to find him. I know I would. I'm not sure if I should believe that you only want to talk to him. But hey, that's none of my business. I wouldn't know what I'd do if this happened to me. Good to know, but I really just want to talk. I want to face Jack's killer and tell him what he's done to me. You know, the funny part is that he actually told me where he lives. He wants to meet me. Would you believe that? How come? Well, this kind of thing he does is called trolling on the internet. It's usually a form of extreme bullying, psychological cruelty. Those who are clever enough say, don't feed the troll. Don't talk to them. It, it only makes it worse if you show any interest in them at all. And I have Adam is no exception. He craves attention. He's a hungry troll who wants to devour as many hearts as he can get a hold of. I emailed him and told him I was a massive fan who loves his work. He wouldn't believe me at first. But trolls are always hungry, and I was prepared to serve him a meal fit for a king. What do you mean? I fed him so much bullshit that he really believed I'm a suicide preacher just like him. Great. I wish he'd given you his door number though. It's all a part of some sick game he's playing. Sooner or later, I'll find him. What are those two chemical products? Well, I... I'm not sure if you want to know that. I get it. You don't want to tell me because I'm a fucking suicidal maniac. Is that it? No, Ms. Ashworth. No, I, I didn't mean it like that. Okay. Maybe to some extent. Just replace maniac with victim and fucking with recovering. You've only just come back from the hospital. Whatever it was that made you do it, you proved you are capable of going through with it. I don't know you long enough to tell you if you're completely over it now. And the last thing I want is to give you stupid ideas. It would be just like what the Eye of Adam does. I would never forgive myself if anything happened to you because of me. I mean, how could I? I've learnt my lesson. Dying is not for me. I'd really like to believe you, Miss Ashworth. But I will need you to promise me that you will never try this method. Alright. I can promise you that I will never try this method. Or 
any other method for that matter. Been there, done that. Didn't enjoy it much. Do you believe me now? Yeah, I think I do. Good. I'm glad you said that, you know. The recipe for this deadly cocktail is very simple. Any good housewife can make it in a blast. Well, well. Boxes full of bleach. I suppose I deserve a bottle. I've worked hard for it. This reminds me of something. The first thing you need is a strong toilet bleach. You know the kind. Not just a regular bleach, but one that makes your eyes all watery and skin itchy. What's going on? Something is wrong, Mitzi. The cats are alarming. That's exactly like when I found you, Miss Ashworth. We've got to check what's going on. Oh, I'm really sorry, but there is no way I'm going out in this fog. Fine. I'll go on my own then. Fog. Can't see a thing. 
Someone could be getting murdered two feet away and not a soul would notice. But still, it could be worse. At least it's not raining, eh? Always look on the bright side, they say, and I always do. Not a talkative type, are you? What's your name, sweetheart? Don't be such a scaredy cat, sweetheart. You're Susan, aren't you? A kind man had described to me what you look like. And what, what can I say? It was spot on. What do you want? I'm just here on a job, sweetheart. Nothing more. I had a call, you see. There's a cat problem. And apparently, some crazy cat lady keeps making it worse for everyone. A crazy cat lady called Susan, I was told. Now, you ain't gonna like it, sweetheart, but I'm taking you for a ride. emergency line. How can I help you? My name is Susan Ashworth. I've been kidnapped. These people are crazy. They're going to eat me alive. I don't know what to do. Please, you've got to help me. Please. What's your home address and postcode, ma'am? What? It's irrelevant. I've been kidnapped. I'm not there. I'm afraid I need your home address to confirm your identity, Miss Ashworth. It's flat 412 Helen Street, EX4422DL, okay? Now please, do something, for God's sake! Calm down, ma'am. Who's kidnapped you? I don't know who they are. They didn't tell me their names. No, but wait. He's an animal control guy drives a white van. He's got a wife. She poured bleach down my face. Bitch. They're... They're just mad. Won't stop at nothing. I'd run away, but there's this fog, and I have no idea where we are. You have been kidnapped by a married couple, is that correct? No, not just any married couple. 
Don't you understand what I'm saying? These people are fucking serial killers. There's blood and bones everywhere. I mean, some of it is cat's blood, but there's human blood too. I told you, they eat stray cats and dogs, and they eat people. They're sick. They make me sick. Is this a case of family disturbance, Mum? What? No! Did you know this married couple prior to the incident? Are you related? Jesus, did I say anything at all that would make you think that? Calm down, please. I'm only trying to help you, Mum. I need to establish some facts first before a police car can be dispatched. Look, just track this number and you'll find where I am. You can do that, yeah? They always do it on films. I bet you've got my number displayed on the screen already. Just do me a favor and send the police car, will you? Of course, Mom. Stay on the line. Oh, did you witness cruelty to animals? What? You mentioned cat's blood. Was this married couple cruel to animals? If so, I will put you through to Animal Welfare Services for this area. Would you prefer that, ma'am? Are you joking? No, I would not. Okay, please hold the line. Hello? Miss Ashworth, uh, are you still there? Yes, of course I'm still here. According to our records, you've recently discharged yourself from the hospital. Are you currently undergoing treatment for any mental health problems? No, it's not like that. Miss Ashworth, please listen to me very carefully. I can connect you with the on-duty doctor at the RCW Hospital's mental health unit where you received care recently. They can help you. You just have to talk to them and explain what's on your mind. I'm not fucking crazy. So, that's it. You're just not going to help me. We are not qualified to provide psychiatric help, ma'am. It's best if you contact your doctors. Would you like me to give you their number in case you prefer to call them yourself? Oh. Don't bother. I'll take care of it myself. Thanks for nothing. Goodbye. Oh no. No, no, no. Damn it. I can't remember my own number. I've got it written down somewhere at home, but I hardly ever use it. Answer the phone. He Hello? Oh, thank God. Finally. Mitzi, it's me. I need your help. What's happened? Where are you, Miss Ashworth? I've been kidnapped by some psychopaths. What? How did that happen? You only went downstairs to check on the cats. Look, it doesn't matter. I'll explain everything later. These people are maniacs. They're killers. It's either me or them. 
I have no choice. I've found some bleach. It reminded me of this gas you were talking about. I could get rid of one of them with that gas and get a hold of a gun. You said it was fairly easy. Miss Ashworth, no, you can't. Listen to me. This guy is a fucking murderer. He's nothing but a parasite. No one will miss him. Trust me. The police won't be coming to rescue me. And I could really do with a gun here, you know? I... but... What's the other chemical, Mitzi? Tell me! Now! Okay, fine, I'll tell you. It's no rocket science. You just need some pesticide. Pesticide? Didn't you say it is something everyone's got at home? Well, you wouldn't use it. You live in a flat high above the ground. It's for people who own houses. Or, like, mansions? You can pick up these things at any supermarket anyway. Fine. What do I do with it? Just mix bleach and the pesticide together. Make sure there isn't much ventilation. And wear some protection. A gas mask or something, yeah? Right. Bleach. Pesticide. Got it. And a gas mask, got it? Yep. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Wish me luck. Be careful, Miss Ashworth. I'll be fine. I'm a tough old girl. This will be like a walk in the park.
happen Do you know what I've seen? Do you know where I've been? I've been for the broken machine <laughs>